Come on then, let's get this shit on the road. I was just about to start. And you said it interrupted me. Take some deep breaths. What do I do again? What's my tick? Oh, it's all time. What, what do I do again? I don't know. You do that. Hey. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Why don't you just start and I'll tell you when you do it. Mm -hmm. That's it, isn't it? I, go, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't do no now. I'm the pills are sort this out. I'm not crazy. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm not the comics. I'm crazy. <laughs> like Deadpool t-shirt. Thank you. I'm not crazy though. The doctor said I wasn't. This is special. Mm. <clears throat> Are we going to start this or what? I might put your cup down or something. Mm. 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 <laughs> <laughs> this is the new tick, is it? <laughs> this is what you do. Blown out the camera. You go, <sighs> hello. <laughs> Not on. Oh, it's been a while. It's been ages, Chris. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> You're taking that long. I'm getting thirsty. Put your cup down. Why? Is this the new professional Chris? Yeah, you're freaking me out, man. <laughs> <laughs> He's got a cup in his hand. He's got a cup. Oh, put your cup down, Chris. Hello everyone! Hello everyone, Chris and Gap here, the Retro Heads, and we're going to talk about Nerg, um, which was nearly two months ago now. Probably about five months ago when, <laughs> when this video actually comes out. Um, it was July 13th, and it's probably, it probably will be about September 13th or so now, anyway, Gav, so yeah, probably two months ago. But we're going to talk about it now, if we can remember what the deal was like. Yeah, I'm just trying to think back on what happened now, to be fair. I haven't thought about it for a good month. I, I've written all the games down, I bought and the prices, what they were and what I paid, so it's not not a total loss. I can tell you that, what I've written down. Yeah, right. For me, from the start, all I can say is it was a cracking day. It went way too fast, like now. We're only there for a Saturday. Yeah. And just for a quick review, from top of my head, it was... Richard, we got there, early doors, set up, walked around. We'd, we'd probably better tell them what Nerg is, what we were doing there and stuff like that, or what you were doing there. I was doing the usual. Well, how can you? We were there for, with Steve. Nerg is. North, oh, God, man. Go on. Go on, you tell them then. Nerg's North East Retro Gaming. Uh, it was held at Gateshead. Um, International Stadium. Gateshead. Gateshead International Stadium. It's a two day event, it's a bit like a play expo really isn't it, yeah. uh, they have like rows of arcade machines in one half of the hall, the other half is sellers and then there's Steve Smith in the middle with like 50, 60 computers. I don't even to put a number on it, there was there loads. Was, there is a lot of computers, like it's just basically like one, two, th is it three rows? Three rows of computers all yeah, up and down the hall. So I, yeah, yeah. So um, and it's nearly every console you can think of. It's not just like every a, console. Will it's be not just like there, a yeah. NES, a SNES, a Master System, Mega Drive. It's like everything CDIs. Thing is, he started yeah. to go a lot of EverDrive as well. So you could pre pretty much say there was nearly every game. <laughs> yeah, nearly every game <laughs> yeah. ever made. Well, you start <laughs> for all his systems like. At least one of every system, like you had a Mass System, EverDrive, a Mega Drive, EverDrive, Super NES, EverDrive, Nintendo, EverDrive, uh, PlayStation Mini, you yeah. had that hacked with a load of games on it. Yeah. So he, he, the amount of games he must have at one of them conventions. Yeah, why even has like, like PC, isn't it? Like laptops set up with yeah. like type and stuff like that. Oh, you know he's what I mean? got, yeah, he's got all the uh, old school computers, some of them that you've never even heard of before. Uh, he's got Vetrex. I was just, and all I was that just going to say that. Yeah. So I was on that for a while playing like a bong game. It was... <sighs> Is that what you call I wouldn't call it playing it. I, <laughs> I was just going to say, Steve makes it look so easy. I've got this. It's, it's so addictive. And he was yeah. like, did the first level, 
so easily and honestly I must have died like 20 times trying to get past the first level and I was getting proper frustrated <laughs> it was the end of the day I'd had a few too many beers and I was kind of like tired oh <laughs> I've done that, did you? No, I haven't done it. Left me to do all the work, as usual. Yes, because the reason we were there is because Steve, obviously, he does the, like the, I'd say what the home console section because it's an arcade section. Yeah. Steve would do like the home console section in there, in which he does retro events. I mean, he does it all over the, all over the country. Uh, but every time he's done a nerd for the last, this is our third year in a row. He's asked if we'll host a competition for him. Um, the first year we did Mario Kart, last year we did Sonic the Hedgehog speedrun on level 1 and this year we did Mario Kart again because it's just a massive crowd pleaser isn't it I think Mario Kart it's it's just such a universal game, you sit down, one button's go, one button stop everyone knows who Mario is, it's a bright colourful game on a Super Nintendo and, and anyone can play it, old or young A lot of people loved and the Sonic one as well, like there was people, it surprised me, there was people actually like practicing before they came yeah they was to watch our video I thought oh they done Sonic I yeah. want to practice that <laughs> and there was you always do get the die hard people who keep hovering around to see if their time's still number one or if they're still in the running for one of the prizes yeah. it's a uh, it is good like sorry go on no but I'm saying it was absolutely fantastic there I loved every minute of it because for me I just loved that instant interaction with people i'll stop people going past and like do you want to go and especially when it's in a crowd so i can sit one person down and i'll ask talk the, to the friends to the friend what's going on and what you're there for what, what have you been buying yeah what have you been yeah. buying if they come to buy games they come for the arcades and he's looking and and i just love i literally talked about gaming modern and retro all day but even geeks you know what i mean because obviously it's like the Comics and that and everything, so we even like talked like the the comic books and everything, and it was just Marvel movies. Had you seen Endgame at that point? Would um, that been out? No, it wasn't. Was it, was it? before Endgame? So it'll have been yeah. all the speculation about yeah. what Endgame was going to be and all that. And it was just conversation all day, non-stop. And like you saying, then they they have the the homebrew wheel they do there. So I started having a couple of pints at dinner time, and it's just it was <laughs> dinner time. <laughs> Maybe above dinner time. Kept sending me to get them for you, didn't you? <laughs> yeah. You're afraid you're going to get ID'd. <laughs> but it was just honestly, I loved every minute of it, and it went way too fast. And everyone is such friendly. I mean, there's some people there who's come back every year and they come and talk to us now, and it's just it, it's it's fantastic. Yeah. I mean, Craig was there, being a man child. He was there for a, a good good few hours, hanging out and talking. Craig's here again. Um, and turned Craig's up, here again. Turned and, uh, up. It I was, was having fantastic. a good, good bit of crack with him. Like, I went to his car. He brought a. Uh, brought a ton of um, Japanese stuff for Scott Shallon. He sells all the Japanese yeah. stuff at these things. He brought like a boot full. It was like four or five boxes just full of stuff. And he was going through it and he was like, I have no idea what most of this <laughs> is like, mate. I don't know what that, that, anything in that box. I have no idea what it is. And he's like, well, the last one I saw of this was a grand and that was like 500 and that was 300, 400, 600. And I'm like, you must have like four or five grand in per box or something like that, you know. He's like taking loads of them in. He says it was it was just crazy, like. Yeah, like it was nice to talk to Craig actually. Yeah. Well, yeah. Um, he's a kind of he's a lovely bloke, like. Yeah. And say why both both from actually because obviously it was a bit struggle because obviously I was trying to talk to him but at the same time I'm trying to stop people to play Mario Kart at the same time. So I love to meet them up again in other events. We can have a more of a quiet conversation. Yeah. But it was this nice how they just come and hung out. That's what I love most about doing this stuff because it's like a, a central point, a hanging out point. You get a crowd going, you get talking to people. It's a nice place for everyone to just, once they've had a wander, they can go yeah, there, have a bit of crack, and, and then a, yeah. split off and go for another wander if they want, or just stop there and have a few games on Mario Kart and have a bit more crack. Yeah. It, is, it is good. Like, I had a good bit of crack with uh, Be the Manchild as well. Yeah. He's a he's a lovely bloke. Like, oh, he's well, fantastic, and he's, and he's just <laughs> he's such we'll, a laugh and all. Isn't we'll it? have to meet up with him outside of one of these events. We were on about going to the Newcastle one, aren't we? Yeah, well, well, I that think finished that, it's now? finished now. Ah. We have um, Game on Two Point Oh, which is like one of the biggest collections of computers in like Europe. I think where they had like all the arcades and consoles. It's literally from the very beginning right the way up to next gen VR. And like I, I went a few years ago when it was on. It was fantastic. And 
us to be the man child in JW, which everyone must know, he's a, he's a massive commenter, he watches everyone's videos in retro scene. He was a really cracking lad, he is. Um, and we're going to meet up with him and all. Um, but we just. It's hard to, to, to be to honest. I couldn't meet. also afford this at all yeah. this month. Like, um, Jay's just had a kid as well, so yeah. he's a bit. I know I've been asking. I know I've been asking if he's come to any events. I knew um, Blackpool. I think Jay can't do because obviously he's a the new dad. Yeah. Um, but like you're saying, we'll have to try and meet up properly. Oh yeah. I mean, it doesn't even have to be at an event or anything. Oh, like, no. It could just be like one of the cities or something like that, yeah. you know. Maybe I mean, up in Newcastle or something, you know, I don't mind. Yeah, yeah. Show for a wonder. Yeah, crack and crack and there. Just a bit of chat, chatting it with yeah. them. It's uh, really good, like. But anyway, we digress. Yes. <laughs> the the event, what did you think of a Gavin here quickly? Because obviously you did. Um... Well, when I turned up, I quickly helped you get set up. Yeah, quick, um, quick being the word. Wait, I turned round and he was gone. <laughs> I, I put my bag under the chair and then picked it back up because I felt a bit naked without it. Uh, and then I had a look around the stalls while everyone was setting up. I went round probably once or twice, had a quick scout round, checking if there was anything like I had to have. Uh, picked a couple of things up here and there. And then made a big purchase straight away, didn't I? Yeah. I was like, because I went round, I went round the full thing. I missed one or two stores, like, a bit out the way, right down the bottom end. There wasn't that much in it. There was a couple of nice bits on it, but I wasn't that fussed. So, yeah, I made a big purchase, and I was yeah. like, I had to go groveling to Chris for some more money. <laughs> I know, it was, it was, the unthinkable happened. The calf come asking me for money. Yeah. Yeah, mm. the the thing was, it was like one of the, it was a weird day because at first it didn't look like there was really very much I was interested in. Yeah, and then the more I looked, there was like, that's good, that's good. Well, I think that's, that's, a, that's a really good. When you first turn well. up, they're still setting up though, so I think they're probably just getting like the boxes out of just the stuff. Then obviously the big price stuff then have been coming out afterwards. Once, you know what I mean? You think? Well, I think it's more along the lines of when I first turned up. I had in my head what I was looking for. Yeah. It's like, I want, I'll probably say, I, I want Mega Man 1, 5, 6. I want, uh, I don't know, a couple of other games. Maybe it's like, if I would love to find Sunset Riders or something like that, you know. Just like, obviously I wouldn't have been able to afford it because it's like 200 plus or something for a nice box condition of that. But uh, yeah, I, I had in my mind like a certain three or four games that I was after. So I didn't see any, so it was like, right, what have they got then? Yeah, Let's have a look, so see exactly. what there actually is. Actually looking at what's there instead yeah. of scanning and looking. Yeah. You know what I, mean? yeah. I mean, don't get us wrong, there is always like the one or two stores yeah. what do have very nice stuff, but it's overpriced a bit. Like, it's like, no wonder he's had this for the last two, three years that we've been going to these yeah. conventions because they are more than eBay even. Yeah. CEX is cheap. eBay's yeah. And then one or two of them stalls is like, he's joking, aren't you? Is there any leeway on this or what? Yeah. <laughs> Will he even come down to eBay price? It's like, it's unbelievable. Like, But anyway. I'm going to say, I just, uh, have you ever noticed that when you're at these events? That know you said there you're looking for certain games. I mean, what it's like if I look up your wall of games here, I can look for a one certain game and without taking in the names of the games, I just know it's not there. You know what I mean? And it will not actually go back for a proper look. You look at each game individually and you realise what games there are. Like for me, look for Zelda. I can look through a bunch of Wii games and yeah. just know that there's no Zelda in there, but I don't know what the Wii games are, if that makes sense. And you go back later, and you actually have a proper look, and you go, oh, actually, I'll actually scan, look at that Scan game. over the names. Yeah. yeah. But you don't actually take in, you just know that what you want isn't there. You don't notice what is there. It's strange how you can do that. Yeah. yeah. Like, then, like you said there, that's what's happened to you. When you went back, you sat looking at each game individually and thinking, oh, I'd look at that, I'd look at that. Yeah, yeah, you, you, you do tend to do that, don't you? See, what I find I do is more that for the different types of consoles yeah i'll start looking at the super nes and nintendo box stuff and if there's nothing 
I fancy there, I'll go on to the Game Boy, Game Boy Advanced, nothing there, then I'll probably just drop onto the PSP, PS2, PS1, just go down the list like yeah. that, you know, Mega Drive, Master System even, I've, I don't get that much for them these days, I don't really play on them as much as I should do, some cracking games as well, mm. but they just, I don't know, I think it's because I'm so into the Nintendo because it's like, I like the cardboard boxes. <laughs> yeah. You know, I don't know what it is. I just like the cardboard boxes. I think it's because... I don't know. It probably does the thrill. That's why I do it. Yeah. But of getting a cardboard box from, like, the 90s or whatever in good condition, it's kind of like, they shouldn't be... You know what I mean? Yeah. If that makes sense, it's kind of like... You get a PS2 game or a PS3 game or whatever. PS1 even, the plastic case is kind of like, yeah, it's a crack case. But like when you get, like, a... A cardboard box from that age and it's still in mint condition. It's the challenge of getting one of the best guys. I don't know, it's hard. Well, you would say, what's the odds? But obviously the odds are high because there's not that many mint condition cardboard boxes from back then, is there? I mean, yeah. the amount of games that were released is millions and millions. There's not millions and millions of cardboard boxes for all these games left. There is a lot, but it's nowhere near yeah. like the amount. If you have a look... The pile of unboxed games out outshadows any boxed pile anywhere, apart from Mega Drive and Master System. Yeah. Well, the thing is, especially for the NES, more than a sense because the NES you had the slip cover, so people just put the instructions in for the slip cover. Yeah. And get rid of the box. This, this NES was. See, a... I never understood why people do that. I never did no. that. I never did that. I don't know why people did. Yeah. I love the box art, and, the, and that's how you know what's on the game. You look on the back of the box, and it's like, yeah, I fancy playing well, that. Again, no, I think it was more parents who did that more than the kids, or just kind of open the game box and give the kid the game, you know what I mean, instead of kind of. Uh, I don't know, because. My mother and father just used to give us the the box, you know, and I would take it up into my room and put it on a shelf. And like, I don't know, it just seemed, seemed weird to me how people, obviously they did, you know. Yeah. I understand if they're getting battered and stuff, you might throw one out. I understand that, but to throw one out brand new in the box because it's like a box, I, I just don't get it. Like, anyway, yes, come um, on, let's pickups. Um, yeah, let's go to some pickups. Uh, Right, I arranged off Stephen Smith, or Steve Smith, sorry, I don't want to use your Christian name. Steve Smith. The boss man. The boss, the big gaffer. Mr. Corners, who was, uh, he's not Mr. Corners, that's a different bloke altogether. But uh, he was as bad as out, like, wasn't he? <laughs> he had a few too many shandies, I think, the night before. Or yeah, something. yeah, apparently he was ill. He wasn't, yeah, he, had, he was yeah. rough, but... Oh, keys digging in. And we don't know. He was up at Newcastle the Drink. night before, yeah. being a big man, <laughs> drinking. Anyway, you'll not watch this. Not now. It's far too late. I got this off him for a tenner. It's the second one I've had. I haven't even tried it out yet. You know, it might not work. The other one. It might be the third one. You know, <laughs> <laughs> it is the third one actually. The other two just didn't work. I don't know, this one probably doesn't. I was having a play with a joystick and yeah, you have to push it all the way as up. As soon as I walked click. in, it was on the table, I sat and looked, I'm thinking you've got like really... I don't push know, it to click. It, you might not have to click it for it to go up. I'll have to test it. I'll be coming for you, Steve. I see him anyway, I see him all the time. It's like a unlucky coin in me. Mm. I don't know, we'll see. How many games you need to press up on? There's only like eighty percent of them. I just play it with the other twenty. For some reason, the twenty said the same all the time. I don't know if it, have you watched. Um, obviously, it's just been released. You didn't tell his recent video. Yeah, I watched it. I saw the photo. Yeah, selfie. It was quite funny. Anyway, <laughs> that's it. To be fair, I, I put it on, started watching it at bare time, and then I had to knock it off to go to work. <laughs> I haven't watched the rest of it yet. I'll watch it though too. You don't worry. I was going to, I was wanting to see if he got the projector home. Mm -hmm. Did he? Did he say if he got a projector home? He was taking, he got a massive, I don't know, like six foot projector screen. I think <laughs> he's taking it home on the train. <laughs> I thought that would be clever, wasn't it? Uh, yeah, I got that off Steve. Um, didn't even pay for me. I think I just gave him the money when I was there. That was even more of a drain on my money, Stephen. <laughs> uh, should I do it in order of what I got it? Because I got them first. Oh, if you want to, Gov. 
Uh, first off, anyway, I went to uh, Kevin Moon. He owns a retro game shop in Newcastle called That Retro Game Shop. I think it is. What, that one? That Retro Game Shop. Or That Game Shop. I think it's That Retro Game Shop. He's always on the Facebook pages. Uh, Kevin Moon or Kev Moon. Uh, he did his Donkey Kong Country on the Game Boy Colour. Very nice condition. I think it was up for 12 quid and he did it for a tenner. I'm not using no one, I'm using Natural's pipe straight over. <laughs> of course, you want to have a look at them as much as they want to see it. I do. It's one I've been after for a while. Um, it's not a brilliant deal, but it's a good deal, you know. If it was a fiver, that would be a brilliant deal. But nobody's going to sell me that for a fiver. Not unless I waggle my way right down. Uh, while I'm on with Kevin, this was at the very end of the day. I think this was money I bought. I had to come and borrow money off Chris for this one. <laughs> <laughs> and it's uh, John Dark. It was up for 20 quid. He had two. He had two copies and it was like, oh, I want that. That says like... I, th I think I borrowed a tenner off it. I had a tenner or something like that. I had a tenner and uh, I was like, I want that. And it was 20 quid. I was like, I know you probably going to say no and it's totally fine. I understand. But would you do that for 10 quid? And he was like, nah, I can't. Like, and I was like, it's all I've got, you know. I have no money. I've got tenner and that's it. I'm totally skinned. And he's like, nah, I can't. It's... It's cheap at 20 quid, which it is. I think the, he had them up for 30 before. and it must have sold. That. Oh, yeah. It's American only as well. It's lovely. It's supposed to be a proper, really good game. Like, uh, So I was like, oh, there. right. You can't do 10. I, I understand. What's the best you can do on it? And he says, seems so I've got two copies. And it's a bargain already. You can have it for 15. And I said, right, hold on, I'll go see my mate, see if I can borrow some money. So I went and cap in hand to Chris and borrowed a fiver off him. I don't know, if you haven't seen our behind the scenes video yet, go and watch it, because I don't think it's quite funny actually. But there's like a moment where Gav walks off at the camera, look at Chris there's the mug back there, where can they can see him? Let's go see what we get. The literally next one's, well I better go and see Chris, can I need to borrow some money? <laughs> But yeah, I got it. I got it for fifteen quid, which is an absolute bargain. I just had a quick look on eBay before we started recording, and I think there was three on eBay. It was forty-five, seventy-three, and then the next one was ninety. It was one ninety, you know, wasn't it? Yeah, but that was from Canada. It was like seventy quid plus twenty-one pound postage or something yeah. like that. So, so that yeah, I'm chuffed with that. It's been a one I've been eyeing for a while, like, but I've just never. I think it was Kevin Moon's stall every time when I was going to get it and it was just other stuff I bought instead. So, yeah, got them too. Did you get anything? Do you want yeah. to talk about something that you got? Um, I can do, if you like. Um, which ones did I get? Um, what it was, I, w I was looked round and obviously straight away I only ever look for Zelda and Nez nowadays, Zelda or Nez. And I'd a, bit Nez in this yeah, video. and I had a scout round. Is and it I, a full set you're going for or are you, are you not at the moment? No, well, I'm not. Not officially? Yeah, not officially. I'm, I, I am. It's but, too cheap to go for the full lot though. Yeah, but, exactly. I'm not, I'm not, not buying them. I don't know, I'm just, I love buying Nez games so yeah. You're doing it too, yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. not going for a full set. I'm not going for a full set no. until you're like about six away or something. I'm going for the full yeah, set. Yeah, but if I end up with one, I'm not going to be bothered. You know what I mean? I kind of if I if I end up with a full set, <laughs> well, I don't I, think people just stumble into getting a full no, NES I, collection. I'm nowhere near. I've only got like what a hundred and how what is it? Is it three hundred or two fifty or three hundred? It's about four or five hundred, is it not? No, not for That's, pal. Not for no, pal. Uh, not pal, for the UK not sure. pal. I know the I think, Master System's are supposed to be a proper low number and that's yeah. about 250 so I would have thought it would be at least you see, well, three. That's it, it shows how I'm not interested in getting a full set of eyes. You know what I'm like, if I was going for a full set I'd know how many games there were, what the rare ones, all that. I've, I've not gone that deep yet. Yes. <laughs> but anyway, I was um, I looked around I couldn't find no NES game. I found a couple hours after but I wasn't that bothered because I was more just going to go for a, a fun day and have a couple of pints. 
and I couldn't find no Zelda. And I literally, I went back and was this about Rob Blunt? What if you said to me? He says, oh, Chris, I've um, seen something that might interest you. Yeah. A bit of a Zelda Curioso. That's um, what I would call it. But yeah. yeah, so he took us to a store on the corner, and what you found that's, was... That's the one I missed, actually. When I, You know, when I said I went round and I missed yeah. one or two, that, that was the one, because it was, like, right in the bottom corner mm. near one of the fire exits. Yeah, it was right in the corner, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. And it was a Legend of Zelda Special Edition DVD that come with Nintendo official magazine. And like I said, I just... Do you not need the magazine to complete that, though? No, I'm not bugged. Is no, that not in your head now? I no. that magazine. What, issue 8 from October 2006? Yeah. <laughs> yes, I need it now, Gav. I hate you. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> uh, but like you're saying, it was just a nice little curiosity to sit in the shelf. Just great. Got wallpapers on it and icons, music, polished trailers and stuff like that. It's just a... I would imagine that it's got a lot of stuff for your phone, like your yeah. Nokia 3210 or something like well, that. What I love is it's got like the link to the past logo on the front, which is cool, you know what I mean? But funny enough, this store was a store that actually had the games on that I needed. And uh, <laughs> they were Airwolf, Stealth, and Jungle Book, which I shall show you in a minute. Um, I can't remember what I got it for. 10, 6, I think that was four, was that I can't remember what I got, I got a Kraken Day Rio, didn't I? I think you paid a pound for that uh, Zelda thing, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, in fact, it's it's on the video, I wear behind the scenes, I know I talked about what I paid for it. Yeah, but what I didn't show in the video is, it isn't the Jungle Book, it is the Jungle Book. <laughs> if that'll focus. Yeah. It's Pal B, I don't know why, I didn't even look at the front, it's six like that. Like Gav said before the video started, I get tunnel vision. I searched me up, these weren't on it, and I thought, oh, I need that. And I just, cost obviously they stick up like that. And like, I just picked them up. I had a quick check of the price, which was a 10, 10. That as well. That, that seems expensive, that Yeah. Know. Well, the thing was, when I bundled them together, I just kind of thought it was a decent price for them and that, so. But, oh, can I see, I'll, I'll get them move on somewhere. <laughs> Bought three games in there's LED DVD. I was happy with them for the price I paid. How much did you pay? I can't remember now. I, I, I think it was about 15 quid in that case. Yeah. It could have been 20. I, I, got do, a, I don't think it was. I think it was 15, you know. I think I ended up getting the game for free. I got so much for free. In fact, I think it worked out I got money off. I think I got money knocked off the games and that's for free. I think that's how it worked out. That, I remember, I'm sure I said in the camera, I got a free DVD and money knocked off. Mm. Possibly. And that's them ones. I'll talk about these ones actually. These are at the end of the day, but I'll talk about them now anyway. Um, and what it was, it was North Face Retro Den there. Yeah. And it was the end of the day, and like literally, I had nothing left on us at all. I'd spent every penny I had. And um, I was looking, and what caught me eye was Kill cool Borders on the PS1. I remember this game so much, it was one of the first games we've got, got three up there. on the PlayStation and I absolutely loved it. And I've been looking for it for a while, not actively, but no, it's in the back of your mind, you always want to pick yeah. it up. And I had a thing that just caught me eye and um, they had £4 on it, I don't mind it's 5 as well, but they had £4 on it. And you know what you think, I've got no money on it, but I knew I had like some, had some of my PayPal. You could have had an extra fiver on you really, couldn't you? <laughs> yeah. Um, so I bundled some games together and I got just ones I needed. It's funny how they were both the same kind, but I got uh, Jack Nicholson Golf on the NES. Is that a five? Yeah. Jack Nicholson Golf. And I got just normal golf on the NES, which was that for four pounds. Is that uh, is that Mario? Well, it looks like him, doesn't it? <laughs> it does, doesn't <laughs> it? What do you what do you think? Is that supposed to be Mario? On I think there? it might actually be. It is, it's Mario on the Game Boy version, isn't it? Yeah. Well, anyway, so that, like, come to, what's that, five, eight, thirteen pound. And I think that's some of like, ten pound thirty seven in my PayPal account. So I actually said, I was like, mate, will you take ten pound thirty seven for them? And he's like, well, why not? Says, it's all I've got. I literally proved it. And I showed my PayPal account. He said, that's what I'm So I apps cleaned my PayPal out completely and got these. Or something like that, like £10.37. 
So I literally went with not one penny left. Even my PayPal was end out when I left the event. Yeah. Do you want to know what Mario would look like if he's a real person? What? It's amazing. I'll show you. Give us a second. Do 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 Oh, oh. <laughs> that's a real person, Mario. <laughs> it's actually, I don't know. Yeah. How awesome is that? <laughs> it's me, Mario. I'm a referee. <laughs> Just when I saw that picture of Mario there, I <laughs> also got a cup. What was, Steve wasn't very well, he was under the weather. Um, and he had all prizes. Um, and, and the competition had started. So Nerg kind of come over and give us some t-shirts and cups and that as prizes. Uh, I think it was like five cups they give us. And when Steve turned up, he brought his prizes. We had like an abundance of prizes. So basically we had top three this time. We did last time. No, we didn't do top three last time. Oh, we did last time. We did Mario Kart. Did we? Yeah. All right. I thought, no, we, we did at least top two on the Sonic as well. Yeah. Because but, they had a picture that one of the, I think second place wanted the picture, yes, but first place Yes, we it. did actually, yeah. So I think we had yeah. top three every time. We always have plenty yeah. of prizes, man. We're, so, not, we're not cheap. No, but like, We've got friends called yeah. Stephen who gives us prizes for nothing. No, but like prizes, you know, like for t-shirts, cups, key rings, little like Mario Kart cars and all sorts. It was, yeah, it was yeah. brilliant. But anyway, there's a couple of cups left. They were left. spoilt with yeah. prizes, like, weren't they? There was a couple of cups left over, so... Uh, I brought one home with me. And did you bring one home, Gav? I didn't know. Why? I don't steal from uh, Nerg, that's why. But the people steal from Somebody stole it from me, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Gav left it on the table where our computer was. Yeah. Went to play some games, come back and someone had stole it. <laughs> I was wounded, like. Yeah, well, like, I you was were good. absolutely good. wounded. Put mine in my bag. Yeah. Who steals? Who steals a cup from a table, though, you know? It's... Yeah, who steals cups? To be fair, they gave five five cups for three prizes. Yeah, <laughs> it's like, hmm. Plus there was there was so much prizes for yeah. first, second, and third. Mm. Like it was it was you couldn't have yeah. given them more cups. And you I know? couldn't care. It was I was chuffed on because obviously we let them pick the cups yeah, they we, wanted. Yeah, we said which which cup yeah. you want. And we got the leftovers. And this is the one I actually wanted because it's just uh, like uh, an all rounder. Some of them had the year uh, on and stuff like yeah. that. And that, but this was just like a uh, that sums it up. Nerg, I'm a North Face retro gamer. And so I was chuffed when this one was left. Yeah. Right. What else did you get, Gav? Right. Uh, I don't know what the store was called. It was a. Uh, it was like a family setting up. Got some really good uh, cheap, cheap games. He had a uh, Tactics Ogre, the special edition on PSP. I think it was like fifteen quid or something. It was opened, and there was a bit of damage somewhere on it. I might say it was on the front cover like the front of the box it's a it's a nice box set actually but i had to pick it up and have a look at it because i've got it but mine's sealed so it's, it's never going to get opened but anyway from them i picked up two psp games which is uh i got the lords of arcadia which is like the big box one same size box and everything as tactics ogre uh that had 20 pound on it Thank you. It's got like an art book inside. I think it's got a soundtrack, DVD in the game, and instructions. Let's have a look. Be careful opening it. Oh, it's got a lovely uh, red box as well. It's lovely. And I also got... View, uh, it does look like, like a red box. Just in case you thought I was lying. <laughs> I got Beautiful Joe on the PSP as well. Uh, I've had a quick blast on this, actually. It's a red hot rumble. It's... I don't know, it's a bit like Smash Brothers. It's kind of like a beat em up, but not. It's weird. I'll have to sit and play it a bit more in depth, like. But uh, it's, it's decent, like. That's good. Cool. I don't even want to open the book too much and close no, the pages, you, you, so I'm going to put it back in. You can't, can you? It is really nice, actually. I just don't want to open the. So I don't want to show you too much, actually. Yeah. So I don't want to, like, 
crease of pages, but that's a nice little setup actually. Yeah, like I say, mm. that was 20 and this was up for 8. And uh put them at separate times. Kind of. I think mm -hmm. I, I picked that one up and I was like, uh, would you take 15 for that? Down from 20. And his, his wife was like, uh, I'll have to ask him. And then he came back and was like, would you do fiver off that? Yeah, okay. Spot on. No hassle, no um and an hour and all like that straight away. Yeah. It's like, oh, champion. And I think it was the last of my money before I got some more off you. I got because he orders a tenner for petrol, which I forgot about. But I had four quid left in my pocket, and I said, Look, will you do that for four, half price? It's like, it's all I've got, four pound, maybe 20 or something like that. And she, yeah, go on, no bother. So instead of 20 for that and eight for that, I got both of these for 19 pound. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy. When you say it like that, it does sound very weird, but. Yes. When it's like. I asked him for a fiver off that and he said yeah and then I, I asked him for £4 off that and he said yeah, it's it's not as Oh, when you're, bad. oh and it yeah. sounds bad when you're adding together you're kind of like But when you say I got that I got that for free and I got a quid off that yeah. it's, it is a bit uh, See well that's what you're doing though because nice. when, you, when you add everything together like even if you get a couple of, couple of quid off each game you might not sound like a lot but when you go home at the end of the day and you add all the money you got knocked off you think well I've got like two free games here yeah. And I paid, you know what I mean? It's crazy. Yeah. It's all part of the fun of these oh. uh, conventions though, isn't it? Uh, yeah, and I've saved the biggest one for last, to be fair. It's, it was like... Uh, well, I'll show this one, because what, what's yours? Go on there, it's just that stuff there. Yeah, well, I'll show this one, I'll show it, because you show one. Um, this also, I can't believe this, because I, I, I went for a walk, um, and I got talking to Lee, Lee from Saw from Retro Gaming and as soon as I went over I got chatting and that was, he's a fantastic fellow, I mean we have a good bit of crap yeah, yeah, we're cracking all the time and as soon as I got talking I was, um, he says oh I've got something you might be interested in he says it's a um, nice little Zelda, he says into Zelda and it's actually a guide for Legend of Zelda The Wind Waker but it's like a Japanese version so it's totally useless um, it's absolutely fantastic to look at. <laughs> yeah, I mean, look, it's got like a, a slip useless. cover on. Um, and Are you brushing the, up on your Japanese? Behind the slip cover, it's like a blue, but like the artwork on the back, look, it's like got all the characters in that. Um, but it is absolutely fantastic. Just a little, just something to look at. Um, but the thing what gets me is though, <laughs> I, what, what, what was the price that gave? I can't remember. I <laughs> 10 or something like yeah. that, maybe. Let's say it was priced up at 15 quid. And I said, um, oh, what, what's the lowest you'll do? And he says, oh, for you, a tenner. I thought, oh, champion is doing is a deal, yeah? And I'll pay the tenner. Chuffed, fantastic. Went back to Gava, says, oh, look, look what I got. He says, um, how much you pay a tenner? He says, oh, I got you that three quid. <laughs> he says, what do you mean, eight quid? He says, oh, I, I forgot to tell you. I haggled him down for it. <laughs> I haggled him down to eight quid for you. He says, um, I forgot to tell you to go and get it. I was like, because obviously when, he, when when Gav first turned up, he just kind of thought like, oh, it's, it's retro, it's here, you're into Zelda, you we don't know, like, I don't know, and, and Gav's like, no, no, it's Chris, man, and that's, that's like, the other one, and I was like, oh, right, aye, aye, I got it all on camera, but, didn't I? Yeah, but that was the whole point, and anyway, I was like, shut up, man, I don't believe you, he said, I did, man, I says, whatever, I thought he was winding this up, I sat in the video when I got home, and I seen it all on camera, <laughs> it's probably in the, um, the behind the scenes video, and I'm just like, man, laughing as I'm editing the video, going like, you know what? He was telling the truth, that was. <laughs> <laughs> Knocked him down to eight quid for me. Yeah, but no, it's just a cool... I mean, it's like... The, it like folds out and that's like got the whole map and everything. It's just a nice little book, you know what it I mean? It is canny like isn't it? It's just a pity you don't speak Japanese. Yeah. I had a good laugh about that anyway, Chris. Let's say something interesting, that, doesn't it? It might do. Yeah. But well, I don't know what it is, that they were like, that's Tower of the Gods, look. Look. There's the boss. Yeah, but that's me. I'm, I'm, I'm chuffed with it actually. I just love the look of it. I love the style. You can't beat their stuff. Worth every penny, yeah? Yeah. You can't beat it. bit weird though. I've noticed it's like on the back, it's like. It tingles on there, isn't it? I but loads of times. I don't know why it's like on so many. Is there just one tingle? There's another one there. He's got. 
a green. Oh yeah, like different ones, but the one in green, there's like he's got some brothers of different oh. colours. But well, they might be just mimic, mimicking him. Yeah. Anyway, well, I right. come on and show your stuff. Girl. My my big purchase. The big purchase. I was nah, I was over an arm with it again or not, but uh, yeah. Um, it was off Nerd, which is a North East Red Road Den, a Facebook group. Yeah. Like local for the North East. Really good site, actually. You get loads of it is really good site, deals actually. on it. Uh, a lot of it seems to be based in Newcastle, or and if it's pick up only or something like that, you, it costs you extra to post it, obviously, doesn't it? So the deals, they are spot on, but it does knock them up a bit for us who was like probably it's an hour away if we were going to drive and then an hour back so it's not worth the trip is it no but still there are local ones as well um anyway i'm waffling really i am yeah uh i got this i don't know how much that was priced at that was priced for five pound it's a lovely blue ps1 joypad you know, it might be PS1. As far as I know, these work for every PS2 game. Yeah, as far know. as I know, they might there might be one or two that they don't. But it's a PS2 joypad for me. Does, does you know, beautiful. Like it's it's lovely. I passed one up. Devlin Turner was selling one at Hull stuff, last year. And I passed it up, and then somebody picked it up when I went back to get it, and he bought it, and I was like, Argh. it was a fiver yeah. as well. Uh, yeah, that was for a fiver. Um, I got this as well because I never saw it before. A bit of funk there, actually, it's a bit of a clean, do it? It does, yeah. Apart from that, it does look I haven't got that one. Um, I got this. This was priced at £4. Aladdin on the PS1. Uh, never even heard of it before, but I thought. Aladdin. The Super Disney. NES game. The Super NES game was awesome. Mega Drive was alright. <laughs> Comments have just exploded there, Chris. So, <laughs> you all know I'm telling the truth. Admit it. Uh, yeah, so that was nine quid and like... Uh, Hold on your fez. It's going to be a wild adventure. <laughs> nobody even wears fezes in Aladdin, do they? On the Aladdin, cartoon. Aladdin does. Mm, maybe. <laughs> That's why it says holding your fez, because you play as a guy who wears a fez. Yeah, does he have a sword in this? Yeah, he does, I. It might be best on the Mega Drive one. It I like this. Like this is nice, Gav. It's lovely. Uh, anyway, and he had this for ninety pound. It's a Nintendo game, and it was basically priced at cart only. It's boxed, no instructions, but the box was just, ah, uh, it was battered to yeah, bits. Like... It was just hanging like I can't believe it being sat in a puddle for god knows how long or something you know when you turn up with a thought what you're doing by you know? but you, like I say it was basically car only price yeah you know which it's a game I've been after for a while and I thought ah I'll, I'll have a punt at it you know um it's Castlevania 3 Dracula's Curse and I'll Probably try to get Chris to put some pictures of what it was like because it was shocking. I think if yeah. you go watch yeah. the other one, it was on there, wasn't yeah. it? Move your back out like that. Just a little bit of space. No, give way, man. We'll get some pictures in the middle. There we go. We'll get some pictures right. up there. Yeah. <laughs> get, some, get some pictures up there. Yeah, I'll get some pictures up there. Um, I've done a bit of box repair on it, like. A bit of box repair. Uh, it's it's sweet, like. It's I've been yeah, it's been ongoing. I'll take it out the protector. I was wanting to get it like. Like new, but that's pretty much impossible. I mean, you can sort of see where it was. Yeah. When you shine the light on it, if you look at it straight on, though. Um, there, that's what it looks like now. Obviously, all the uh, from about that point there went across, and then right up to there, and all this side was just damaged a bit. Uh, the back still needs a bit of work doing on it. Right. Trying to do writing on these boxes is a nightmare. Obviously, I've got all that to write. I'll better do that with a pen, though. I'm not trying to paint that on. It was a nightmare. But, uh, yeah, it did have Palcon on the bottom there. I must have gave it about three or four attempts, and I just couldn't get it to look right, so I thought, right, black. Just do it black. 
get the paints out. So. I've, I've been looking forward to seeing this like because I've seen pictures of it, but an actual. Oh, there was there was a flap hanging off and all. Where the, I'd say hanging off, it was just loose. It was on. It was inside the box or something along them lines, you know. The workmanship, Gav, is incredible. There was a chunk missing out of the top corner there. <laughs> I filled that in with a bit, of, bit of cardboard and some uh, gum tape. Honestly, man, like it was. You don't understand how this here. You're saying it's filled the hole up here, and then all this and like saying that's a, it's, it's amazing, Gav. Honestly. You can't even tell from like a distance. I mean, come on, like from a distance on the camera, there, can you even tell it's? Well, you're saying from a distance, but like. Well, even close up. Sorry, if you, you have a look close up, I mean, none of them cogs were there. But if I tilt it, can you see a little bit of bubbling there, right there? You see the bubbling going across there, down there, and along. That's the cardboard underneath. I mean, don't get us wrong. I had the sandpaper out and, and like put glue on to solid it up and then sand it off to get it smooth but uh yeah but just to sit in a box protector on your shelf just for you personally and you my, my favorite thing was like i can do that now it opens and closes probably but uh if you have a look on the inside you see the bit of box repair there that flap was totally off you see hi <laughs> A lot of work went into it, like a lot yeah. of hours. I have to say, um, like I said, I was, I was, I wasn't sure what I wanted to do with it. Uh, I had to put a strip all the way down the inside there, just to sort of strengthen it up. Um, I'm not sure. This back corner, no, the, can't remember where the hole was now. Yeah, I think it had a hole in that back corner there, or. Half that patch there was missing or something like that. I had to pack it out with bits of cardboard and all sorts and glue it back up and everything and yeah. All looks good. Flaps work. Yeah. Like yourself. Nice if you ever did move on you have to let people know what you've done. Oh, of course I would. I wouldn't I wouldn't yeah. try to flog it. I mean but like you say that's a summer, I, I don't think I would ever because that's like someone just having your collection well, is what you've done. It's... When I was halfway through doing it, I said, I'm not getting rid of it, Chris. Yeah. I've got an attachment to it now. I've spent that much time on it. I'll get it again. I might get it again. I'll buy a nicer copy or something. But like, like I said, the cartridge is fine. That might have been out of the box when it was sat in a puddle for months on end or something. Don't get us wrong, there's a lot of gunk in the bottom. I had to clean out, but it works perfectly. Probably sat and played it more than it. Wait, well, definitely more than every other game I bought. Because <laughs> I've only played Beautiful Joe out of all the rest. Yeah. Like I say, when I was halfway through, I said, I'm, I'm not getting rid of it. I'm going to keep it till the end now because cause I have an emotional attachment to it. I put that much effort into it and that much work, and it was like. I'm making a video on what I've been doing, so probably just watch this space. It's got about four hours of me painting a box to edit down and me going, oh, look at this, I've got this and I've got that here and I've done this. And it's like, yeah, don't know how it's going to work out yet, but it might not even end up on YouTube. Cracking. Yeah. To be honest, I think it looks better out of the protector than it does in. The, when it's in the protector, it sort of makes it stand out a bit more, I think. A little bit, maybe, I. But you got to have them in block, box protectors, haven't you? Yep. Otherwise, it could end up water damaged or something. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, that was up for 90. Joypad was 5, Aladdin was 4. And I said, would you do 90 for the lot? So I basically got that for £81 because I'm happy with the price is paid for them, for them yeah. yeah so yeah 81 quid like I say that's worth £81 all day long I think and about six hours worth of my <laughs> work <laughs> probably more yeah. Uh, yeah it was a that's all my purchases yeah that's me done it was a see it was already was a cracking day like it was a lovely day like yeah. it was good because in all our, we sent the and, Go back and forwards, it wasn't just going spending all your money then hang around. I think this my spend was spread out throughout the day on summit, and then obviously, you just like taunt everyone throughout the day, taunt to Steve and his um, his mate. It was just it was a really good day, it really was. 
Yeah, I'm just going to say it before we do go. Obviously, the Mario Kart challenge it was Ghost Valley One. Um, the time is let's see if I can beat them. I mean, the first attempt was 15:80, but our top three were Vince. No, it was Chris in third place with 13:94. Andrew in second place with 13.57 and our winner was Vince with 13.24 Tell I might even pop a picture of them here um, in fact we'll go third place which was Chris second place which was Andrew and first place which was Vince um, and like you say and it was just a really good day if you can beat their times I'll, I'll probably put the times down what it was underneath there have a sell a go if you want to see if you, can, if you could have beaten on the day, it was Ghost Valley 1. Yeah, leave it in the comments if you can beat them or not. Yeah. He did do the shortcut like Vince, didn't he? Yes. I, I couldn't believe it's the first time. Pal, pal. No, it was, no it's the NTSC. It yeah, was on the mini. It was so on the mini. The NTSC. The only guy I've seen do that is Sammy, who is going to jump before, but of course he is. He's a. He's a yeah, those of you who don't know, is well, Sammy was the world record yeah. holder for. A lot, a lot X of amount levels. <laughs> levels uh, he's yeah. some boy like. But the thing was, though, Vince, he, he tried to do a jump. I says, You can't do it. I says, You, you can't. I says, I don't think you'll be able to. He says, you, You've got the power drift around the corner, which is crazy hard to do a Mario Kart, and you've got to get it. I think it's like a free pixel window opportunity to do the jump. I, I think it's pixel yeah. perfect, to be so honest. So he, he disappeared. I think you watched some guys on YouTube, they'd come back half an hour later, and he like had a couple of goes. and on one lap out of the five he did it but that's all he needed that one good lap yeah. and um yeah i was talking it. to sammy about it actually like at leeds last year and he was saying like you're best off getting your time to this before you even try for the jump yeah and he says what will happen is you'll do the jump and then you'll just go straight off the edge afterwards because you you'll be that excited you'll panic as soon as yeah. you do the jump and you'll miss the next turn because it's the finish line straight after, but you have a yeah. sharp left turn, which I did. I didn't see him do the jump. I'll be honest. Like I think I was talking to somebody at the time, and he just went yes. <laughs> I was like, whoa, what's happened? I did the jump. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so well done that man. Yeah. To be honest, I I wonder if it's easier to do the jump on the NTSC because it's faster. I don't. Know. I wonder if it's easier to do it rather than the PAL. Because I tried, I tried for like probably an hour or two when we first started doing the challenge. Yeah, like you did a year that. ago or somewhere. And I just gave up. I just thought, nah, can't be bothered. I'm never gonna, I'm never gonna do it. Why try? Why, why spend so many hours trying? So yeah, well done, that man. Yes, very well done. So it was a really good day. Um, and I think that's it, Gav. Yeah, I don't yeah. know how long we've been talking for because for some it's, reason it'll have been a long video this when we turn right? our camera around so we can see ourselves for some reason it knocks the date the time we're recording everything off so I'm going to clue how long we've been on the line for there um, like you're saying I can't wait until next year already I'm looking forward to it I, can say I just love the, the competition and stuff like that um, for a bit of luck we'll be invited back next year by Steve well, I think we'll be because someone already talks about what we could be doing maybe something bigger and better bigger um, and better yeah but no, anything to add, Gav? No, no. Get right. yourself there next year. Yes, oh, definitely get yourself either. there. Get yeah. to hang out with us. Um, and like I said, thank you all for watching. Listen to us ramble on for God knows how long. Um, and we shall see you all in the next video.